All right, Baltimore City Council Ways and Means Committee. We are here for Council Bill 22-0270, sale of property 5545 Kennison Avenue for the purpose of authorizing the Mayor and City Council of Baltimore to sell at either private sale all its interests in a certain property that is located at 5545 Kennison Avenue, Block 8190, Lot 015, and is no longer needed for public use and providing for a special effective date. Mayor Costello, Councilman from the 11th District, Chair of the Committee, joined to my left by Councilman Robert Stokes, 12th District, Vice Chair of the Committee. To my right, Councilwoman Danny McCray, a second district member of the committee, and Council Vice President Sharon Green Middleton, a sixth district a member of the committee. I believe we saw Councilman Ryan Dorsey, third district, who's a member of the committee. He's walking in right now. Uh, Councilman Isaac Yitzi Schleifer has an excused absence for observance of a religious holiday. Uh, and the final member of the committee who I will introduce uh, if he is in attendance, if and when, is Councilman Chris Burnett, uh, 8th District. Um, Want to give a quick run of show as to how we're going to handle today's hearing. Uh, we have a number of uh, city agencies who this bill was referred to. Uh, that includes the Law Department, the Department of Finance, the Department of Planning, the Department of Housing and Community Development, Department of Real Estate and the Board of Estimates. Uh, we're gonna go through the agency reports from each of those agencies. Uh, they will explain what their position is, whether they are favorable, unfavorable, or if they defer to another agency or they do not take a position. Uh, I will note that the Board of Estimates, it is standard for a sale of property uh, bill to be referred to the Board of Estimates. The Board of Estimates does not provide a report to the City Council. Uh, they only take action uh, if and when an ordinance for a sale of property passes the city council. So we'll go through each of the agencies. After we get through the agencies, uh, we will take uh, public testimony. Uh, I believe we have five folks signed up. Do we have others on here? And these with the X are on here. Are not on there. They are on here, so it's one, two, three, four. Okay. Um, so we have a handful of folks who are signed up uh, to testify. Uh, we've also received uh, written uh, uh, positions on the bill. Uh, colleagues, those are included uh, in your packets. Uh, each of those that has been submitted to me, I've asked uh, Marguerite Curran, who's staffed to the committee, to my immediate right, uh, to enter into the bill file. Uh, those uh, letters, whether they are in opposition, support, or no position, uh, should be available on the City Council's website by searching for the bill number. Uh, with that, uh, are there any questions on that process before we get started? I'm just taking questions on the actual process as I've laid it out. Okay, and if you uh, wish to testify, you should have either submit, submitted something in advance. Oh, yeah, yeah. Should have submitted something in advance or written your name on one of these uh, sheets. There are additional sheets out there. Once we get through all the folks uh, who have signed up to testify, I will do another call for public testimony to see if there's anyone else who may not have had an opportunity to fill out this sheet yet but wishes uh, to testify. Finally, uh, we have new technology in council chambers uh, for the folks uh, who are from the city agencies as well as the folks uh, from the public who are testifying. Uh, you will see two buttons, the one that looks like a little person on a cell phone. You're going to want to hit that. Uh, once that turns red, your mic is active. Uh, when you are done speaking, I'm going to ask that you turn that off and you will see no light. That means your microphone is not active. Okay, with that, let's start off with the law department. Do we have anyone from the law department? Thank you, Chair. Um, this is Sophia from Mayor's Office of Government Relations. Can you pull that, that mic a little closer, Sophia? Thanks, appreciate it. Thank you, Chair. Again, um, um, this is Sophia from the Mayor's Office of Government Relations. Uh, the law department stands by its support and supports the bill for form and legal sufficiency. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, let's go to Department of Finance. 
Good afternoon, Mara James, Assistant Budget Director for the Department of Finance. We stand by our report. We do not oppose this legislation. Um, in our report, we outline a bit of the costs associated with this facility as it is a surplus property managed by the Department of General Services. Um, the estimated annual cost is about $115,000. Um, just wanted to make that note in case that was of interest to the committee. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Department of Planning. Renata Southard, Department of Planning, Land Use, and Urban Design Division. Planning stands by our report, which is favorable. Thank you. Department of Housing and Community Development. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. Stephanie Murdoch, Director of Legislative Services for the Department of Housing and Community Development. And I wanted to acknowledge that I am joined by Deputy Commissioner Edwards today, as well as Assistant Commissioner Woods and Agent Barcala. Uh, DHCD stands by our bill report in support of Council Bill 220130R. This ordinance would provide for the authority to sell the property located. S Stephanie, hang on. Run that back on the bill number 22 0270? No, 22 0130 R. We're on. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> City Council Bill 22 0270. Sale of property 5545 yes. Kennison Avenue, correct? Sorry about that. that that's all right. Just that, want to that make was sure. from Wednesday's hearing. <laughs> um, <clears throat> just uh, a little bit about the property and uh, the purpose of this ordinance, as I said, is giving us the authority to sell the property. It's uh, approximately 5.2 acres and it's located in the Grove Park neighborhood in the 5th Council District. The property is zoned R6, and it includes multi, uh, multiple portable trailers and a two-level former elementary school. Um, DHCD strategically acquires and disposes of real property to create housing and economic development opportunities for Baltimore's neighborhoods. Our development division is tasked with disposing of city-owned real property on behalf of the mayor and city council, and we use the RFP process to seek developer, developers or development teams for large-scale projects that require extensive experience in urban revitalization, a proven track record of community partnerships, and financial and organizational capacity to do so. We work with the Department of Planning, which coordinates uh, the 21st Century Schools F initiative, which is in place to surplus 26 school buildings over the next 10 years that are no longer needed for public use. Related to this project, a RFP was uh, issued first in 2020 that did not receive um, viable proposals and was again issued in 2021, which drew six submissions, uh, five of which met, met the threshold. Uh, DHCD held uh, community presentations with all of the RFP candidates that met the threshold in 2022, and that was attended by community residents and neighbors. We additionally uh, offered community input on online surveys. The RFP for 5545 Kennison has been awarded uh, to Communicare in 2022, and we are currently in negotiations with the developer. This property is no longer needed for public use, and the sales ordinance is needed for the sale of this property and the redevelopment of this site. So we stand by our bill report, and we are here to answer any questions that the committee may have, and that we are asking for a favorable bill report. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, and Department of Real Estate. Good afternoon, Casey Kelleher for the Department of Real Estate and the Comptroller's Office. Uh, we stand by a report and deferring to DHCD um, as the agency that's uh, facilitated the RFP and the LDA process and will, um, could possibly facilitate the LDA process. Thanks. Thank you. Colleagues, any questions for our city agencies? Madam Vice President. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Not, not really a question, but uh, could you just briefly explain uh, the RFP process and selecting a, a committee and, you know, just a little bit more detail on that process. And I, and I ask this 
Um, and I'm sure every council member basically kind of, they experience this, you know, um, especially when it comes to a school building. Uh, just personally, um, like I have Langston Hughes. Uh, recently, Martin Luther King is going through this process. Um, Garrison Middle is a swing school that is beyond the control of the community that in that area that has endured um, many, you know, uh, holdings of other schools coming in while a school is being renovated or lost or so on. So I guess it's just important for the general public to just understand that, you know, there's a committee that you select. So just briefly go into that detail. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, so submissions are reviewed by a panel, and that includes persons from Maryland State Department of Housing and Community Development, the Baltimore City Office of the Comptroller, the Department of Planning, the Department of General Services, and DHCD's Development Division. And then those submissions are scored by the panel, and a recommendation is advanced to the Housing Commissioner. The scoring is based on the quality of the development concept, project feasibility, developer capacity and experience, uh, benefits to the city, to the community, economic and community inclusion, and uh, financial wherewithal. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Madam VP. Colleagues, any other questions? Okay, let's turn to the public testimony portion of the hearing. Um, we'll start with uh, Ms. Karen M. Braden. Did I say that correctly? Yep. If you could come up, uh, please adjust the mic. You want to be uh, seven or eight inches away from it. Um, that button on the bottom right of your screen. Oh, Mr. Green's going to help you out. Yep. So as soon as you see that red light, you're good. When you're done, press the, that button again. Um, I'm going to ask, uh, we've got five folks signed up. I'm going to ask folks to keep your testimony under five minutes um, per person. Uh, as you're getting to the end of that five minutes, uh, I will gently remind you um, of the time limit. With that, take it away, ma'am. And you're saying as soon as I see which light? Pardon me? What light did you tell me? F five minutes. No, I heard that part. That's not what I said, but that's okay. My name is Karen M. Braden. I'm president of Grove Park Improvement Association. My theme today is they don't really care about us. That enough is enough. If you all remember that song from Michael Jackson, we are here to say no sale to Communicare, a nursing rehab facility. Therefore, we are requesting a stop to the sale of 5545 Kennison Avenue, Baltimore, Maryland, 21215 formerly known to many as the Grove Park Elementary School No. 224, erected and opened in the late 1950s for this ordinance, No. 22-0270. As the president of Grove Park Improvement Association since the late 2015, the community saw the need to place me at the helm of the, being one of the youngest females, 49, to be the president at that time, to help preserve the community that I grew up in, born and raised Baltimorean, right in community of Grove Park. Uh, the elementary school gave us all who attended the school senses of belongingness, events held, taught us a lot. They had summer camps there. We had a lot going on. We are true Grove Park folks. We do not play when it comes to Grove Park. The process for the RFP was flawed. Why was it flawed? Because too many things happened, too many rules were changed during the course of it happening, and we were not ever given anything in writing to look back, to refer to, to understand what was happening. I begged, I offered to please slow down the process so that I could get more community residents involved with the process. I'm serious, this is real serious for us. We have not ever been through this. The sale of Grove Park 5545 has a meaning, not just for me. It's not something that I'm just going through emotionally. We still live there. We still have everybody acting and trying to be a part of what we are, a community. We shouldn't be disregarded. We shouldn't be turned aside and said, look, you know what? We heard you, but it fell on deaf ears. We shouldn't be told that our own councilman was against us publicly on the TV when he said he supported an organization and not the community that was basically his constituents. 
Our families continue to reside there. We continue to have everyday life and living. As of today, earlier today, I saw several children on the playground. This is something that says, we're not done yet. As they say, God is not done with us either. Um, this matter was confusing to most. Many people thought that Communicare was a health facility that gave universal health care. I'm like, that's not happening. They want to demolition the entire building. We have a consent decree that was established for us from the EPA. They paid $16 million to have our underground pipes rerouted to the powder mill stream. The powder mill stream area was developed in the late 1700s, early 1800s. I keep talking about this. We played a part of the war, 1812 through 1814, so that there was gunpowder made in the powder mill stream. Why is that important? Because that's a part of the life. That we, that's a part of what we represent, that powder mill stream. If you disturb our underground pipes, people receive raw sewage in their homes. Can you imagine? having raw sewage in your basement more than once. So the city, everybody was involved with trying to help rectify what happened to those people, but a lot of them had to put out their own personal savings, almost up to 50,000 or more, because the city only offered $2,500 if you qualify to get some kind of some kind of sense of cleaning from the raw sewage in their homes, in their basements. Our neighborhood still has flooding problems. A lot of insurance companies dropped a lot of the people. This is serious. This is serious. We are a community that was considered as off the grid. Off the grid because our children were at a Hallmark school. And now our children have to walk through two other communities to get to school, whether it's raining, whether it's not. They don't even have buses for them. They have to take city buses. This is pre-K through fifth graders. And also, they had made a middle school and, you know, Preferably, we would hope that it was the siblings from the middle schools would help the younger children. That's not what's happening. That's not what's happening. So we actually have a lot more things going on. All of this process of the RFP was done during the COVID-19. That was when the world stopped, right? Worldwide pandemic. So here we are today. I can't say much more because there's a lot that I can say. And they always say, Karen, you say too much. You doggone right because this is real, this is what we're going through. So I'm going to say, I'm gonna stand down and I'm going to let others speak, but again, the vote is no to the sale of 5545 Keniston Avenue at this very moment so that we can renegotiate, we can go back to the table, the community can be a part, not just be a part of 10% on the panel. We don't even know who was on the panel. Well, yeah, I wasn't. Okay, all right, thank you so much, God bless us. Thank you, Ms. Braden. Next is Mr. Stephen A. Ward. All right, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Vice President of Grove Park Improvement Association. And just like what um, our president has said, this will totally change the dynamics of our community. That's another reason why we do not want Communicare um, in our community at this time. We are more interested in having something that we feel will be an asset, such as a multi-purpose center, possibly a charter school, something that will help out everyone and that will attract new residents to our community. I don't see the nursing home attracting what we would want within our community. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ward. Uh, next up, Ms. Barbara Smith. See an indication that she's not here. I just want to do one last call. Just want to make sure we don't miss anyone. Miss Barbara Smith. Thank you. Mr. Terrence Three.
Good. We're getting used to this new technology. <laughs> you're, you're red, you're good. There you go. Okay. The opposition of this proposed sale to Communicare has been strong. We have attained 300 signatures from our various petitions, and we do not want the commercialization of our neighborhood, which this ordinance would facilitate. Uh, with this commercialization comes the adverse impacts of environmental challenges, noise and traffic, and then stagnated or stagnant uh, home values. These are all concerns that we have brought to DHCD, to our legislators and city executives, and to the media. In the months leading to this hearing, the Grove Park community was informed that there is nothing that can be done regarding this sale, that it is a done deal, and while you know the damage that, result, uh, that will result from this and the well-noted complications of this process, you may not know the names and faces of the people uh, that you, you will damage if this ordinance is passed. So our neighborhood represents a diverse community of many black and brown uh, individuals. Um, you have Mr. Jerry and Diana Diaz who came to our community seeking a stake in the promise of equity and all that America has to offer. Ms. Barbara Smith, who is one of the uh, Grove Park's uh, first black homeowners and whose uh, husband was one of the first black fire chiefs. And lastly, there are children, our, our black and Latino youth, who our neighborhood sought to provide a resource for. There's Melanie and Brianna Diaz, uh, Sophia Rice, uh, mom's back there, uh, Simone Giddings, Jose Andres, and my own Saleya Three. So youth that uh, frequently, you know, play on the playground frolic, if you will, they're doing this to the backdrop of a boarded up school and a burnt out school auxiliary building. And you are seeking, if you pass this bill, to replace it with what, you know, Communicare itself bills as a large scale rehabilitation center. If you just go to their website, it's there. But also, Ms. Holly Norelli, on our November 9th meeting stated to us that, hey, I struggled with coming to you and with this because I knew I wouldn't want this in my community, which we all know she would not if she lives in a million dollar house in Edgewood, um, and not Edgewood, Edgewater, right? Okay, thank you, got it. So we're gonna replace, if you vote for this, pass this ordinance, you're gonna be allowing a large scale rehabilitation center into our neighborhood, a 100% residential neighborhood with 24 seven ambulatory care and stress on our already fragile pipes, which we have had many issues from Baltimore to Newark to Jackson, uh, Mississippi, and you're bringing that right here into our city, guys. So I implore you to exercise the power that you have uh, to table and reject this. Uh, you know that this will lead to the degradation of our community. And I have also reached out, I, me, Ms. Braden and um, Steve, we've all reached out to the owner of Communicare and proposed other locations uh, that this could go to in commercial areas that want the jobs there. They're in commercial area. Okay, so lastly, I'll leave you with this, which is um, I'm a man of faith. Romans 15, two, each of us should please our neighbors for the good to build them up. Do this by reopening the school, allow us to reopen the school because we brought in four uh, minority-led nonprofits um, to reopen it as a school and a rec center. There is a healthy, um, I wanna say, alternative medium that meets both DHCD standards and the neighborhood standards, and that is Concord Baptist Church allowing them to open up the school and the rec center, and they have the funding and the backing and the ability to take on master lease, everything else. Um, lastly, do this for our kids because guess what? We need a rec center in our community. District 5 does not have a rec center and I, gotta, I have children, so please, thank you. Don. Thank you, Mr. Three. Next up, we have Mr. Calvin Watkins. Mr. Watkins, please be sure to press that little button on the bottom right to turn red before you start. Good? Good. Yeah, if you want to pull it up a little bit, be about yeah. seven, eight inches away. Yep. Yep. Thank you for your time today. Uh, I am here to uh, represent Grove Park. It is very disheartening 
that our own city council people don't stand up for us. And I'll be more specific. specific. Our city council person has not stood up for us. And it is, it is, it angers me that you vote for someone to represent you and they don't. They actually go against you. We have photography of our city council person walking the grounds of our beloved Grove Park Elementary School with the people from Communicare, as well as our delegate, Sandy Rosenberg. Now, at some point, I believe they should have came to the community ever since then, since the RFP was issued, come to the community and said, hey guys, what do you think about this? Instead, they're shoving it down our throat. And from what I understand, there are probably other politicians who are gonna green light this project, and it is the worst. Unfortunately, there's not much we can do because there's just not much we can do. And I'm in a place where I will never, I'll say never, never is a long time, but I can no longer trust a politician that I vote for, for city council, because they are intensely going against us. And I know you guys are doing this hearing, this listening. I don't even know how much weight these, these, these testimonials pull, because I just don't. I don't even believe that the city council or anybody's going to take part and help our community. They're commercializing our community. And it's always, it's always someone working against our communities to destroy our communities. And this project will commercialize our community. And no matter, it's going to destroy property values. And because our, and, and the politicians who sold out, they sold our community for $7,500. And it is, it is, I don't know how much, long, how much time I have. I'm really done, like just done with all this. I'm, I'm disgusted. I'm, I don't think you guys really hear us. People come and testify, give us testimony. I don't know who hears us, who takes us seriously, but it is a shame that, they, that we were sold out for seven stinking freaking thousand dollars. It is horrible. And um, I'm gonna land my plane because I just no longer believe in what you guys do as city council representatives. I'm out. Thank you, Mr. Watkins. Next up, we have Dr. Shirley Thomas. Uh, good afternoon. Um, I just want to reiterate what the others have been saying. I am a lifelong Baltimore resident, and I've been a resident of Grove Park for 16 years now. Um, it is a beautiful neighborhood. It's a peaceful neighborhood with neighbors, um, longtime neighbors uh, who look out for each other. We don't think a nursing home is the best fit for our community. We believe it will destroy the character of our neighborhood. Um, and also, it's going to tear down the building that's there. It's going to um, tear down some homes that are there to build a parking, parking lot. Um, we want a charter school. We want some kind of community center, uh, which will um, keep our neighborhood stable and strong. We want a community hub, which will keep the neighborhood strong, keep the tax base strong. We want to attract new families to the neighborhood. This uh, nursing home is a bad idea. It's not going to bring anything to our community. It's not going to bring anything to the city. And I don't know who thought it up. It is a piss poor idea. Again, we don't want it. And those of you who are supposed to be representing your citizens of Baltimore, you're not doing a good job if you allow this commercial entity to come in and destroy our neighborhood. And we're going to fight it to the very end. We're going to keep fighting it. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Thomas. Uh, next up, uh, Donnell Williams. Hi, I have little to say about just I don't agree with it. You know, I've been a Grove Park um, citizen for all my life, and it's a community. You know, everybody try to take care of their property and stuff like that. And to have something like that come in our neighborhood, it's just going to destroy it. You know. I consider our little community a little hidden gem, 
you know, in the city. You know, you have other places in the city that you can go anywhere and, and you know, knock down blocks and change the city for the better. But Grove Park, it won't help us. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Next up, we have a Miguel N. abbreviation. Hello. Okay. Uh, how you doing, Mr. Costello? Uh, I'm one of the many young residents, and I'm very active within my community. On behalf of all the residents present and not present today in the Grove Park community, I am against the soil simply because of lack of inclusion. Uh, I was just made aware of this about a, like a month ago. Um, the residents feel they have a right to be a part of the process and the residents seek a seat at the table going forward. The RFP committee stated that they conducted online polls which was grossly inclusive, inconclusive. There was no needs assessment and no communication whatsoever with residents, particularly during COVID. Uh, when locked down during the time, people weren't accessible at all. So, uh, Mr. Costello, I ask that you defer your decision and invite us to the table. Let us be a part of the planning. This decision affects us directly. Grove Park is a symbol of prosperity. The Grove meant something back then, and I'm here to stay. It still does. Invest in the Grove. Don't destroy the school. Don't destroy our prosperity. Thank you. Uh, that is all we had signed up for public testimony. Is there anyone else who wishes to testify? Ma'am, if you could just state your full name for the record. She, she's, take, she's good. This is very emotional for me. Ma'am, bef before you get started. Robin you... Patford. Thank sorry. you, ma'am, I appreciate it. I'm sorry. I've been in Grove Park. Uh, it's the house my parents bought when I was 18 months old. They're deceased. And I am fortunate enough to still have their home. We are all afraid that the integrity and the authenticity of our neighborhood will be lost. All we want to do is be at the table, as the young man just said. It's as if people that don't look like us they come to our communities, and then they take our communities over. And it is not fair. It is not fair. We deserve to have something in the neighborhood that will continue to help the neighborhood flourish. Jobs are cool, but we go to work in the Grove. We get up and we go to work. So Communicare can perhaps go to another neighborhood. But it is not what we want. This is very emotional for me and for the rest of us who are simply trying to hold on to the integrity and the authenticity of Grove Park. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Patrick. Anyone else who wishes to test? P-E-T-T-I-F-O-R-D. Pet, got, P-E-T-T. I, F is in Frank, O-R-D. I'm sorry, ma'am, thank you for that. Yeah, I got no it. Problem. Thank you, ma'am. Anyone else? State your name for the record, please. Good afternoon, uh, Caroline Hecker, Rosenberg, Martin Greenberg. 
I was not planning to speak this afternoon. I represent Communicare, which is the successful um, respondent to the RFP that was put out by the city for the uh, redevelopment of the former Grove Park Elementary School. But I've heard so much this afternoon about the uh, RFP process and the and, and you know Communicare's plans for the site that I, I feel compelled to stand up and remind the committee that this bill only authorizes the city to to sell this piece of surplus property. It does not identify a buyer, and it it does not. Um, it has absolutely nothing to do with who, who, how the process worked, or who was included in the process, or what the ultimate uh, redevelopment of the property is going to look like. Communicare is very excited to come to the neighborhood. They think they're going to offer great services to the neighborhood, and create a, a way for elderly people in the community to stay and age in place in the community as they move into the need for assisted living and nursing care. Um, but none of that's before the committee here today. This, the only thing that this bill does is authorize the city to sell a piece of surplus property that really has outlived its useful life. The school can't be repurposed for any um, type of functional use any longer and really needs to be demolished in all cases, whether it's to be purchased by, Grove, by uh, Communicare or by any other buyer. So happy to answer any questions the committee may have, but I just wanted to make that clarification. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Hecker. Is there anyone else who wishes to testify? We're, we're, we're not going to do repeat. What's that? Is there anyone else who has not yet testified who wishes to testify? Anyone else? Okay, that closes the uh, public testimony portion of the hearing. I'm going to go back to our colleagues. Colleagues, are there any uh, other questions uh, for our um, city agencies at this time? Okay, colleagues, is there a motion uh, to move the bill favorably? Motion by McRae. Motion by McRae. Is there a second? I'll second the motion. Costello is a yes. Burnett, absent. Dorsey? McRae? Yes. Middleton? Yes. Schleifer's an excused absence. Stokes? Yes. This bill passes with five yeas, uh, one absence and one excused absence. It moves to second reader at the next meeting of the City Council. And we're now in recess until 6 p.m. sharp uh, for uh, City Council Taxpayers Night. Thank you.